Hey everybody, it's Peter and this is the 2024 KTM RC390. It's the original, at least in North America, small super sport bike, but things have changed in 2024. There's some other competition out there. So what we're gonna do with this bike is we're gonna go through a complete in-depth review, front to back, technology, everything. And if this is the kind of thing that you're interested in, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If there's something I leave out, let me know in the comments the things you wanna know about because I can come back to this bike again and again and again because I'm filming here at McLean sports they give me complete access to their entire vehicle lineup so we're gonna make sure that we go through this bike in detail and like I said if you have questions I'm completely happy to pull it back on film again here again and again this year to make sure that you have all the information on the 2024 KTM 390 the RC 390 all right let's get going with this review so sometimes when you do a bike review, it's all about the bike. And sometimes when you do a bike review, especially now in 2024 with this bike, it's also about the competition that's out there. So this bike is set up more for the racetrack than a lot of other bikes in its class. But now there is the Ninja ZX4RR, which is a similar displacement bike, but also a completely different bike. That is a four cylinder bike. This is a single cylinder bike. So it makes more power. It also is set up with great suspension, more of a track oriented riding position, but again, a very different bike than this. A lot of people have compared this to the Ninja 400 in the past because they made similar power numbers. The Ninja 400 was set up a little bit more of a commuter bike that became very good at the track. This is set up more of a track bike that is very capable of a commuter. The change there is that the Ninja has gone to a 500. So you're in a unique spot here and right after I'm done reviewing this bike, I'm also going to review the Yamaha R3. So that'll be on this channel as well. There's a lot going on in this class and everybody's attacking it from a different angle. So what we're going to do in this video is take a close look at this bike and sort of try to place it in the class and help you decide if it's right for you. So starting with the front wheel here, you can really tell the manufacturer's intent when you start looking at everything to do with the front wheel on a motorcycle. So first of all, you have a few differences here. The brake is on the far side, so it's harder to show you on this shot. We may show you in a second shot, but let's take a look at what we've got here. First of all, very lightweight wheel, a 110 wide tire, so that's uh, one centimeter smaller than or less width than a full size super sport bike. And it's in line with something like the Ninja 500 or something like that. What this does is help make it a very flickable bike, very good that way. The other thing that's gonna help it is the tires. This is a tire you don't see on other entry level bikes. And again, this isn't really an entry level bike. This is a Michelin Power 6 tire. And what that does, I've done my homework on some tires recently just to make sure I'm fully up to date on everything. The Power 6, first of all, the rubber compound is gonna be a little bit more grippy. It has good wear characteristics, but it also also has a little bit more of a slick section on the edge of the tire. Instead of running tread out to the edges, you've got a, st a stronger um, section here of more of a slick tire. So when you get right over on the edge, you've actually got a full on slick there, which is pretty handy if you're gonna take this bike to its limits, which is what it's designed to do. The other thing you do is you have an upside down suspension here. Again, that's not common in the class either. Uh, more common, like I said, on that ZX4RR, which is a more expensive bike, different power class, different insurance class, whole bunch of things. You can see even here, they have a little rubber elastic here. So the suspension is adjustable. That's going to allow you to see how much compression you've hit in various areas, how much the suspension has moved. So that is a piece of a tool. So when you're tuning it for the racetrack, not only can you feel the difference, you can sort of see what you're doing with your suspension. And again, this bike can teach you to be a faster rider. So we're going to talk about all that. So again, upside down suspension creates more stiffness up top. It's what true super bikes use. It creates less unsprung weight. And speaking of less unsprung weight, let's flip the bike around or at least flip the wheel around here and try to get a glance at this front disc brake as well. Flipping around, I didn't move this bike out from the wall because I'm going to be going around the other side again. So I've probably adjusted the white balance in editing. So excuse me if the color looks a little bit off, but you can see the brake disc here. It's not actually mounted further in. It's actually mounted to the wheel. Again, it's probably a lightweight thing. It's certainly a style thing. It's uh, what uh, KTM does sometimes. You've got the ABS ring in there. We're going to talk about ABS in this. It's not just ABS. It's now cornering ABS. That's been updated along the way with this bike. And the other thing you're going to see is a radial mount caliper. So again, this is sort of um, yeah, Bybri brakes are basically sort of like a Brembo sub-brand as far as I understand it. So quality braking here, which again is a sort of a step up. This bike forgoes the extra power that the other bikes in the class have been chasing and instead dials it in and focuses right down to the handling and sort of teaching you to be quick and consistent and you know steady through the through turns and braking and that kind of thing. So basically it's all about keeping your pace as opposed to making up for your mistakes with a faster engine. 
So speaking of the engine, let's talk about the heart of this bike. The heart of this bike, like I mentioned, is a single cylinder 373cc engine that makes a lot of power for its class, a lot of power for what it is. It is a great little sport engine. And again, it's not going to make up for your mistakes with tremendous power, but it does have enough power. One of the things the way the engine is set up and the gearing is set up is the zero to 60 time is actually very quick for what this is. So the top end speed isn't going to reach 200 kilometers an hour or 120 miles per hour, but the zero to 60 that zero to 100 kilometers an hour is going to be fairly quick which again allows you to get down to speed through a tight turn get back up to speed with bigger bikes and again the cornering the ability to flick this bike from side to side the ability to learn to ride to learn to be consistent to learn to be steady through turns uh, to maintain that pace that's where this bike is going to be great it's going to teach you all of that uh, through this bike. The other thing we should mention is they talk about the frame in the, on the KTM's marketing material, how it's you know a couple pounds or a pound and a half lighter here and a pound and a half lighter there. All of this is designed to be a little bit lighter, a little bit stiffer. It's designed to be a good track bike. So again, low center of gravity. You can sort of see there's a lot of openness in that section right there. Everything is moved forward. So again, the weight is where you want it to have that true super bike feel. Take a look at that rear tire instead of the front tire. A little better angle here because it's a little wider tire. It's a 150 series tire, but you can see sort of that area where uh, the, you know, it's even actually, if I zoom up a little further, they sort of have that power six label right up through here. That is outside of the treads and that's where you have that slick area. So considerably slick up through here, only these down through here uh, add to the slickness, but you still have this band here, which a lot of uh, tread will go out a little further. So again, these power six tires give you that little bit of extra slick at the edge to when you're really leaning this bike over to give you the most rubber on the road. So if the bike is designed to give you that confidence and also teach you on the track, what about riding position? Well, that's worth talking about as well. You can see here compared to a lot of smaller bikes where they aim for a very low seat height, you know, I have to stretch my heels to put it down on the ground. So it is a little bit tippy toed. It's not like it's super, super high. The bike's very narrow. You could put your feet together here, but you can see I'm leaned over here and when I put my legs into that tuck position, my legs are raised up, my feet are raised up. And what of course that does is allow you to really lean this bike over, really uh, progress in your skills and get better and better at uh, riding, riding faster corners, taking it to the track, that kind of thing. Overall, it's not a super uncomfortable position. There are certainly less uh, comfortable super bikes out there, but it is very close to a super bike type position. You're leaned forward, you're tucked in. The other thing I'm gonna mention here is this black panel here. This is a metal steel painted uh, tank. This is unpainted plastic. This bike is designed for you to move around on the seat, to move around and rub up against the tank area. And this of course won't scratch because it's an unpainted surface. So it's designed to get you active. It's designed to teach you how to ride. And that's the kind of the point of this whole thing. You're not making up for your mistakes with a tremendously powerful motorcycle. You're learning all about how to be quick without relying only on the engine, which of course is gonna make you a better rider when you move to bikes with more power. So not a bad seating position for comfort, but certainly set up to be a sporty ride and to have an active riding position here. You can bring your seat way back. You can tuck right down against the tank. The flat top of the tank here is flat to sit against your chest where you have a windshield that pops up here. We'll take a look at that when we get in there. So you can get really into that aerodynamic position and uh, you know use this limited power, use an aerodynamic position to catch people. But again, it's all about getting back and forth on turns, moving across the bike as you need to, to really be quick. And that's what it's gonna teach you to do. Taking a look at the face of this bike, you can see a lot of it's designed for aerodynamics, but it's also designed for a limited frontal area. Again, that's gonna keep the bike nice and narrow, nice and thin. In fact, there's not even signal stocks here. So we're gonna turn the bike on. I'm gonna turn the high beams on just to show you the actual headlight. You can see with the high beams off, you've got your daytime red lights, which give you some width there. There's your head, headlight with high beam, but we're gonna turn that off just for a second so the camera can see your signal lights there. Signal lights are built up high into here, bright LEDs. They do shine straight sideways as well as forward. So again, you've got a really kind of compact design, no stocks or anything like that. All about aerodynamics, all designed to give you all the advantages it can for a lack of power motorcycle to keep up with bikes with a lot more power. So pretty cool front end, pretty cool design to this bike. Again, it recognizes it's not gonna have a ton of power, so it's gonna give you every advantage it can, including aerodynamic advantages to catch faster riders. Since I showed you the front lights, show you the rear light as well. You do have your stocks there, so we'll just turn that signal on. So you've got traditional LED signal lights right there. Turn that back off. And of course, if we tap the brake, there's your bright LED brake light. Again, may not be lined up perfectly with the camera, but it's a nice uh, brake light that uh, certainly gives you a lot of visibility on the streets.
So before we take a look at the dash, let's show you the top of the suspension forks here. You do have adjustable suspension here, which is kind of nice. We're gonna zoom right in there and I can sort of show you it says, compression there. So compression adjustment right there. And you can see I can adjust it with my hands, uh, which is super nice to have, especially on a bike where you're kind of learning and tweaking things. You don't have to pull out the tools. Rebound is red, compression is white, so red rebound. But you can adjust this while you're driving. You can adjust this while you're stopped. And again, being a you know tool-free adjustment, it really allows you to just tweak the bike exactly the way you want it and feel the differences as you're heading through the same sections of road or same sections of track again and again and again. So again, really nice to have this tool-free adjustment on a bike like this as you're learning to go faster and faster and learning what the different pieces of adjustments can do for you. So taking a look at the dash, when you turn it on, it says ready to race in a big white screen. I'm just trying to get the white balance right because cameras have a lot of trouble focusing. I will say that KTM's dash is phenomenal. It's a very, very good dash. It does not film fantastically. So I'm having trouble zooming in a little bit closer and getting the sort of automatic camera to automatically adjust to everything. So we'll leave it kind of where it is, but you can basically see the keys there. I'm gonna to try to avoid pointing in the screen too much here. Uh, you've got ABS and traction control on. You've got the road mode. So again, different driving modes. We're gonna uh, cycle through some things here. Uh, we're going to go to the motorcycle settings here just to show you some things. Traction control and ABS here. So let's just uh, let's just turn up into that. So traction control you can turn on or off very simply. ABS down here you can do the same sort of thing. Road or supermoto. So again KTM does this road or supermoto thing. It allows that rear wheel to slide if that's what you want to do. On the adventure bikes they call it rally mode. Same idea. It allows your rear wheel to slide. We're going to go down to the settings here and just sort of choose. You can choose your quick selector. So that's some of these buttons. I'll show you there in the future. You can make one button do a quick thing. So you could make it for instance turn on your ABS or turn off your ABS. That kind of thing. There is a Bluetooth connection here so you have ability to connect your cell phone to this. It does give you some uh, things here you can change your themes you can change where you want your shift light to come on so if you want your shift light to come on before red line if you're breaking it in or if you want to come on you know you know, say 8,000 rpm there instead of 10,000 or whatever you want you can choose where you want that units languages services extra functions let's go into here uh, we'll like through things uh, mo motorcycle traction control and then there's cornering abs we're going to choose that for a second so cornering abs is on the available on this bike so again what that does is it allows you to lean that bike and the bike senses that it's leaning and then adapts its abs to cornering same thing with the traction control it can do that kind of thing so kind of some cool things in here one thing that's not mentioned here is there's an available quick shifter on this bike if you want that you can get that as well so a lot of uh, simple controls here easy to read but again ktm has a lot of functions on their bigger bikes it still has a lot of functions on this bike just a little simpler to use overall top right you've got that uh, gear selection it's in neutral right now so gear indicator excuse me and then you've got um, you know nice clear speedometer and again the traditional looking tachometer which i think is just a little easy to read especially as, at a glance on a racetrack Take a look at the handlebar here. I didn't sort of take it from the side view here because I think you can know that there's a horn button there, there's signal lights there, signal button there. What I do want to try to show you though is that these lights or these uh, switches, excuse me, are lit. So you can see here they are backlit switches, which is again really nice for the class, just really nice for above the class. You do have that headlight on there and then there's a flash to pass right there and that leads all of these buttons to adjust those controls. So remember when I said there's that quick selector here? You have the option of uh, setting up these buttons, for instance, uh, you know, just tap the one and it'll be your. Or, um, you know, quick select. So let's say turn your ABS on or off or that kind of thing. So you have the ability to sort of set these as a preset uh, to do a function that would be in a menu. So instead of digging through the menus, you can just make it hit that button and it does the thing you want it to do. So kind of neat to have that. The other thing we should talk about is the clutch lever here, which we're going to try to show you this piece right here. Let's come to a different angle and do that. All right, so taking a look at the clutch lever here, what I'm trying to show you here is that this is an adjustable clutch lever. So what this does is, of course, a lot of people think it's for different size hands, which of course it does have that advantage. I'm sort of sitting behind the wrong bike. It's a light clutch pull. We'll talk about that in just a second. But if you want to adjust that through five different positions, so five different positions of further out or closer in, I think it's on number th three or so right now. Oh, I can't see. Nope, it's on number five right now. So it's uh, furthest out, I believe. Um, but what you can do is, not just adjust it for different size hands, you can adjust where that grab point is. So by adjusting this lever in or out, the way that grab point feels to you is going to be a little different. So it allows you to, precis to precisely get that grab point exactly where you want to by having the adjustable lever there. And it's adjustable on the clutch lever and the brake lever. So same thing, you can have that grab point on the brake be exactly where you want it to be, or you can adjust it for different size hands. The other thing we should talk about is this is a very light clutch pull. It is a slipper and assist clutch. And what that does, of course, is 
because it allows the clutch to slip instead of the wheel if you do an aggressive downshift or something like that. So again, it's a race function that's also great for beginners. Uh, it's just a safety function, but it also makes the side benefit has a little bit lighter clutch pull, which means if you're driving this through town or because it's a smaller engine bike, you're shifting a bunch, uh, you know, it does make a nice light clutch pull, really gets you used to exactly where that clutch grabs and that kind of thing. But again, available quick shifter if you want on this bike. So let's talk about who this bike is for. Again, who is for when it originally came out without some of the tech options that you now have available. So again, this has evolved throughout the years, but who was for originally was kind of for maybe beginners, but also designed to be a decent racetrack bike. What I would say now is it still sort of fits that lineup, but you have some competition in here. So first of all, as a beginner bike, it's an interesting beginner bike because it can really take you from beginner rider to very, very, very good rider if you commit to learning the things you're going to need to learn to become a great, for instance, racetrack rider. It's not the most comfortable bike in its class. It's not the least expensive bike in its class. And when I talk about the class, I'm talking about these small displacement sport bikes. What it is, is probably one of the highest performing bikes for the power class. Now, again, things are changed up a little bit with Kawasaki introducing the ZX4RR. It has phenomenal suspension. It is a significantly more expensive bike. It is going to be more expensive to ensure but it's a four-cylinder bike which also is a small displacement bike that allows you to have great suspension. This to me does not compete with that bike. I think this is going to be a little bit lighter. I think it's going to be a little bit more uh, because of lower power. I think it's going to be a quicker learning curve. Again, that four cylinder still makes quite a bit of power. And this is going to, especially when you sort of unlock, they have emissions regulations on that bike, but this is still going to, I think, it's probably the best option to teach you to be a quick rider, to learn how to use a motorcycle to drive quickly. Now, again, if you're a beginner, still lots of fun. The other thing that I think makes this bike interesting is if you get it as an early rider, you can definitely keep it to an experienced rider to continue to improve your skill. If it's a bike that you wanna keep in your stable kind of thing as opposed to sell and move on to the next bike, this is a bike that makes sense. The other thing that I like about it, again, just keep going on and on, is that you don't really have to tweak anything here to take it to a racetrack. A lot of people will, there's a lot of things you can do to make this you know, more racetrack friendly, but really at the end of the day, you've got everything you need here to go from the road to the racetrack and do some track days. And that to me makes it pretty cool because it is a practical, comfortable enough road bike, but it also doesn't need anything tweaked out in order for it to be a really good racetrack bike. And that to me makes it super, super interesting. So there you go. This bike's available at McLean's right now. You can check them out. There's a link in the description to come see this bike for yourself. You can connect with them. But again, if you have questions, things you wanna see about this bike, make sure you let me know in the comments below. And again, leave me a positive comment or two. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you want. We're gonna do reviews of all these kinds of bikes. We'll come back to them again and again and again. And uh, this one really kind of intrigues me. I never really spent the time with it that I have now. And the more I spend time with it, the more interesting it is to me because it really is different from the other small sport bikes uh, in the category. What I'm gonna do next is deal with a bike on the other end of the category. So the Yamaha R3, uh, which again, also a small sport bike, small displacement sport bike, but a much different bike than this. That video is also coming up soon. I'm gonna film that right now. So thanks everyone for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.